Ah, I cannot believe I'm about to do this. These are $250 shoes. I'm sorry, vapor flies. Hey, what's up everybody? Nick here. And unless you've been living under a rock, chances are you've heard about a shoe that's on the market that's all anyone can talk about. Oh, it has a spring in it. They feel like trampolines. There's an unfair mechanical advantage. Of course, I'm talking about the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Next Percents. Now, I've actually never seen these shoes before other than everybody who's winning marathons and is wearing them. So I am here at our local Nike store to get myself a pair, put them through the test, and actually cut into them to find that magic spring that Nike has implanted in them. First things first, let's go get a pair. Um, I'm looking for those magical shoes that Nike makes. Yeah, so these are the shoes. The magical shoes with the spring inside. With the, yeah, the carbon fiber. Yeah, there's a carbon fiber plate in the shoe. In the shoe. Really? Yep. Is there any way to see it? If I had a hacksaw. Have it. Totally worth it. All right, we're gonna find out for ourselves. Yeah, we'll see. $250. Great, thanks very much. Oh my gosh, here they are. And they're light, beautiful, pink, my size. Let's go beat them up. All right, so here we are. We got a Woodway treadmill behind me. I can dial in the pace to exactly what my target marathon pace is. Now, when I ran the Honolulu Marathon, I ran right at three hours. That's about 6.52 minutes per mile. So that's what we're gonna target today. And I'm gonna take these beautiful magical shoes and see just how I feel running in them at my target marathon pace. Now, I've got my heart rate monitor on, so we're actually gonna watch my heart rate. Now, we also need a control, right? We need to be able to compare this data against something. So we're gonna be using the Clifton 4 by Hoka, um, very similar shoe in the sense that it has a lot of cushioning, it's very lightweight, marathoners love it, uh, but no one is saying that the Cliftons have an unfair mechanical advantage. So I'll run a mile in the Cliftons, I'll run a mile in the Vapor Flies, and we'll compare the data. Woo! I'm in my bouncy castle. <laughs> These are insane. All right, what I'm about to give you is a side-by-side -side comparison of these two shoes. I will run a mile at the exact prescribed pace of 652 minutes per mile. I've dialed in my pace and now I'm getting up to speed. Now I will note that I ran the first mile in the Hoka's and the second mile in the next percent. So perhaps I was just a little bit tired going into that second mile. Uh, I tried to be really cognizant of getting my heart rate down but clearly you can see here, my heart rate starts higher in the next percents than in the Hoka. But that flips about, oh, I don't know, 200 meters here. 132 BPM versus 130 BPM in the next percent. This pace feels very comfortable. Again, this is a pace that I once held for 26.2 miles. So it feels comfortable to me. Here's the awesome slow-mo shots we got. You can see that I do overpronate, um, and maybe that's what gives me this great trampoline effect, you know, this awesome response coming off these shoes. I put a lot of pounds into them, and I get a lot out of them. All right, coming into about a half mile here, it's really clear which one has the higher heart rate. Hoka, 148 BPM. The next percent's 147. And from here on out, you'll see I'm almost always consistently two or three beats per minute lower in the next percents. Now, I don't know whether I just got super fit running that first mile in the Hoka's or not. I think what we have here is a shoe that is in fact allowing me to run just one or two BPMs lower. Um, and you know, I, I think you have to give that credit to the shoe. Now, one or two beats per minute may not seem like a huge difference, but now imagine taking that from just one mile and multiplying that by 26 miles. A couple beats per minute can make a huge difference in the amount of energy you're using and the amount of energy you're expending over the course of an entire marathon. I'm talking about the difference between running two hours and change or running one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Think about how important those last 21 seconds were for Kipchoge. Was it the shoes? All right, well, there's the side-by-side -side comparison. They feel like they have an insane amount of cushion, but I'm not quite ready to say they have a mechanical advantage. 
The dad doesn't lie. We saw what these can do, but for me to really be convinced that these do in fact provide a mechanical advantage, I would need to see another test that indicates that. So let's go do a jump test with the Clifton's and the Vaporflies and see which one I can jump higher in. If these do in fact have a trampoline effect, like a lot of people have said, I mean, heck, I just said it. If these do have a trampoline effect, you would think that I would be able to jump higher in them as well. Here comes the trampoline. <laughs> oh my God. That's insane. Just my first jump tied my best jump in the Clifton's. Go, go, gadget trampoline shoes. Oh! <laughs> it's not even tall enough. I just blew through 24 inches. All right, so my second jump was my best jump. 24 inch vertical in the vapor flies, 22 inches in the Clifton's. That's a lot of data that says that these shoes really do have an advantage, but I'm not totally sold yet. I need to go in and find that carbon fiber spring that everyone's talking about. This is gonna hurt a lot, but I'm about to take this $250 pair of shoes and absolutely shred it. All right, now as awesome as this thumbnail is, I think we should take a more scientific approach. So I'll be using my scalpel here. And we're gonna go through each layer to find out exactly how this shoe is made. Now, I do have one roadmap to help me out. I found the patent for this shoe online. This is the patent that they filed with the US Patents Office. And I will be able to actually go through layer by layer and find out exactly how the upper and the bottom is made. Let's cut in, here we go. All right, I'm gonna start with these laces, mainly just because they look like standard laces. All right, as predicted, just a standard lace. Okay, interesting note, the ends of the laces are called aglets. All right, um, now before I cut into the upper, um, there's nothing super special about it. No one's complaining that the upper gives a huge advantage, but uh, it is interesting to note, this is a really like nice, durable upper. Um, it's a translucent wover upper that they're calling vapor weave. You can actually see that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's called a vapor weave. It's very durable for running, but obviously a scalpel sliced right through it. All right, now one thing that I actually thought was really neat about the construction of the upper is this heel pad. Um, it kind of just sticks out and looks like it would be annoying, but I actually found that it was really comfortable and did a good job of holding my heel in. The one thing I will also say about the tongue, um, it kept kind of moving around on me. I really had to unlace the whole upper and really position that tongue just right in order to get it to sit where I wanted it to. That might be one area of improvement that they could make. Remove the insole. Insole's just glued down, it looks like. Yeah, a few spots of epoxy. And that is really nothing special about that. That is just a, you know, eighth of an inch of foam and that's not providing any advantage whatsoever, not even providing much cushion for that matter. This is the part I was really excited about. I really wanted to get into this stitching and find out exactly how the foam and the carbon fiber are integrated. Okay, now we're into the foam section and this is called Nike Zoom X Foam and this is really what's giving you that trampoline effect. I mean, you gotta feel it for yourself. It's just, it's just so responsive. I mean, it really gives you a lot back. And now that I'm starting to get through it, I can feel that carbon fiber plate in there. Following my roadmap here, I'll keep digging. Ooh, I think I see it. 
I don't want to damage the carbon fiber plate, so I'm going to come at it from the side a little bit. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, I can definitely feel the carbon fiber plate now. So much foam in here. Now I've sawed through about half an inch of foam from the side here and I'm getting my first glimpse of that carbon fiber plate. You can see that black band right there. Runs from the heel and I'm guessing it runs all the way into the forefoot, but I'll have to keep whittling away to actually find it. Feels very firm. This sole here, um, it looks super thin, but it's actually super durable. Like, I'm really having trouble getting the knife through it. And the other thing I'll say is all that BS about air pockets being in this shoe, I mean, there are no air pockets. It's literally just Zoom X foam, carbon fiber, more foam from heel all the way to forefoot. Um, now these are the vapor flies. I'm told that the alpha fly, which is what Kipchoge set his sub two hour marathon in, those do actually have an air pocket, but Nike is super, super protective of those shoes. And as far as I know, there is no way for the average person to get their hands on them. You know, people think of carbon fiber as being this uh, elastic spring. Well, that's not really the case. That's not what carbon fiber does. It's very stiff. I think if there's any springiness, it's probably coming from the Zoom X foam. And having the carbon fiber plate sandwiched between Zoom X foam gives you a combination of rigidity from the carbon fiber, but responsiveness um, and cushioning from the foam. So that trampoline effect, maybe that's what I was feeling. You know, that's the kind of technology you want to see in shoes. Uh, lightweight, but solid and supportive, and not inexpensive either. Carbon fiber is extremely expensive to produce, um, so it's no surprise this is a $250 shoe. All right, I'm just gonna stop halfway through. Um, this is really hard to saw through. This is really good carbon fiber, and I'm just gonna tip it up. You can actually see that carbon coming off the saw blade. Wow, all right. That's what I was working for. Right in the middle of the uh, midfoot, you've got the carbon fiber plate running. So again, it runs all the way from the heel to the toe, providing rigidity, providing structure, but I wouldn't say it provides any mechanical advantage. Now, I can't speak to the Alpha Fly, but the Vapor Fly, it just seems to be a really great, great pair of shoes with great cushioning and great structure. All right, after an hour of dissecting, this is what we have left. Um, a bunch of pieces and what was a really great shoe. Um, I didn't find any hidden springs. I didn't find any hidden air pockets. Uh, based on my testing and now dissecting them, I don't think there's anything wrong with this shoe. I think this shoe should be legal. I think it's just a phenomenally structured, phenomenally well cushioned shoe. And if I was running a marathon, this is the shoe I would wanna run in. Now I am not paid by Nike. I'm no longer sponsored by Nike. I get paid absolutely nothing. I actually bought these shoes. So this is an unbiased opinion. The Nike Zoom Vaporfly is a phenomenal shoe. And in my opinion, this is just the evolution, the next iteration of technology that we have seen being introduced into shoes for the last 30 years. So hats off to Nike. You've made a great shoe. All right, now you guys know I always give away the shoes that I feature in my video, so here we are. I'm giving away this pair of Nike Zoom Vape. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna give these ones away, but I am going to give away a brand new pair of Nike Zoom Vapor Fly to one lucky winner. If you wanna enter in this giveaway, click the link in the description to enter. Um, one lucky winner will receive a brand new pair of Nike Zoom Vapor Fly in the color and size of their choice, and they'll also receive 100 packs of Run Gum. Um, last but not least, I can't do videos like this without you guys. This was a pretty expensive video to make, believe it or not. Um, and I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing my videos, a new video every single week.